Call to order. This is the 15th regular meeting of the 2011-2012 Common Council. And as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. We have a hope of succeeding if we learn from our past mistakes and pull together to make the hard choices. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Belt. Here. Boren. Here. Carlson. Here. Decker. Here. Common. Here. Hammond. Here. Heidemann. Here. Koth. Here. Kittleson. Here. Matichek. Here. Raisler. Here. Sampson. Here. Van Akron. Here. Vanderweel. Here. And Versi. Here. 15 present. We have a quorum. Now if we can all join Alderman Matichek in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Kevin. Looking for approval of the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting. President Decker. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes under discussion. There is no discussion. All in favor of approval say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration uh, to the Business Improvement District. Leo Messner, Eileen Simmons, Caitlin Bratz, Mike Miller, Mary Christian, and Bill Holbrook. All terms expiring 9-12-2014, signed by the mayor. Thank you, Steve. That lies over till the next council meeting. That is all for appointments. Okay, moving on. We have the election of Alder Person for District 5 to fill the vacancy uh, vacated by uh, former Council President Rindfleisch. Okay. Um, Do you want to have her speak first? Do, would anybody, um, Ms. Lassard, I know you put in your name for District 5. Would you like to speak to the Council? If you would like to, please. I want to thank the mayor, attorney, clerk, all the persons for giving me this opportunity to speak to you. My name is Susan J. Lassard. I live at 5016 Minning Road in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. I own and operate JNS Property Management, and I am a real estate broker and a property manager. My home and my company are both located in District 5. I have lived in Sheboygan since August 15, 1990. <clears throat> I currently manage a Mandalay Apartments. I do all aspects of property management and have been on this property since it was built 12 years ago. Amanda Lane is a $6 million property. It is run in a professional and a personal manner. From accounts payable and receivable, budgets as well as tenant relations, from move-ins to move-outs. I also negotiate and supervise all contractors and contracted work projects. I also manage several homes. I've been doing property management for over 30 years and I've been a real estate broker for half that time. In addition to my professional life, I currently sit on four committees with the City of Sheboygan. So on the Board of Review, Housing Authority, Marine and Harbor, and the Redevelopment Authority. I am also very proud that I have been and will continue to be a board member to the Lakeshore Weekend since its creation. I'm currently serving as secretary we have now entered our fourth year raising funds for Milwaukee Children's Hospital, having had a very successful benefit last year held on South Pier, working in a wonderful complement to all the business owners on South Pier, and we were able to donate $90,000 to Children's Hospital. I'm a 17-year member of the American Legion Auxiliary and have served as membership chairman in the past. I've worked on benefits in the past and continue to work with the Bridgeway program addressing the needs of domestic abuse in our city. 
Some of my proudest moments has been to the benefit of our fine city. It took 11 years, but to see the safety needs of the corner of Whedon Creek and South Business Drive come to fruition to ensure a safer environment to those who choose to travel this corner. With determination and patience, the project was completed. When the discussion to close the fire station that directly affects my district, I organized a listening session. It was there that we discussed and heard the needs and thoughts of my fellow citizens, as well as received information directly from the fire department that was in attendance. I also joined in the efforts to keep fire station open and happily it remains open today. I care very deeply about public safety and protection in my district and that and the entirety of our city. Through the years, I've raised funds for our police department to purchase video camera, bulletproof vests for our police dog, and have fought to have one of their buildings donated to them. To say that I am proud of Sheboygan would be an understatement. I care what happens and how it happens. I want to see Sheboygan move forward in a positive manner. I feel that the voice of my district needs to be heard, and I would like to be the one that's listening. I have the time and the ability, but most importantly, I have the desire and the concern. I am involved, and my involvement has and will continue to be a positive attribute to this city. I ask for your favorable response and support in becoming the older person for District 5. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sue. Okay, we will now uh, hold the election process. President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by open ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list, and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. Second. We have a motion and a second to open the floor. Are there any nominations? from the floor for Alder Person for District 5. We are looking for nominations from the floor. If there are no nominations, the seat will not be filled. Nominate Susie Lassard. We have a nomination. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to nominate Ms. Lassard for Alder Person of District 5. Do we have any other Nominations for Alder Person from the floor. Going twice. Any other nominations? And as is customary three times, are there any other nominations? If there are not, President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that nominations be closed and that we direct the city clerk to cast a unanimous ballot for Susie Lassard for the office of Alder Pers Person of District 5. Second. We have a motion and a second to close nominations and cast a unanimous ballot for Ms. Susie Lassard for District 5. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Aye. Okay, we have some ayes and some noes, so we will go to a ballot. We will go to a ballot. Attorney McLean will hand out the ballots, fill out your ballot, and as Sue always says, sign and print your name so she can read it. Please fold it in me. half and pass it to your left.
Um, by vote of the council, um, the uh, council has voted not to confirm Ms. Lassard for alder person for the fifth district. Uh, therefore, their that uh, seat is not filled, and I believe um, that it uh, would be up to the council, but it will not be filled for the remainder of this term, which would be until April. We had no other nominations or no other candidates. Council has voted not to vote for Ms. Lassard to be the alder person for the fifth district. Um, I don't think it would be proper to hold another election. We had three weeks for candidates to come forward. Ms. Lassard was the only candidate to come forward, and this council has voted not to uh, confirm Ms. Lassard as the alder person. Do we need to take a vote of the council to not fill this position? Steve, or what do you, what do you um, think? Yeah, w without uh, the one candidate receiving majority, I guess the option for the council would be to uh, uh, take a vote to leave the vacancy uh, open until the next, uh, next election when the term is up. Uh, the council has chosen not to uh, give the one candidate that's running a majority of the vote, so therefore, uh, I think it would be possible for the council to say, well, you, know, you still want to have another election, but give it a few more weeks. I, I think that's probably not fair to the, uh, the one candidate that did choose to uh, put her hat in the ring. Uh, so I would say that it would be in order to, uh, for the council to make a motion to leave the position vacant until the, until the general election. Okay, do we have a, a motion on the floor, Alderman Van Akron, you had? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I just have a question for clarification. Um, former Alderman Ryan Flesch's seat doesn't actually, that term runs until 2013. Um, so both of those seats then would be up in this April's election if we leave it vacant, I'm just clarifying. Yes, they would. Yeah, okay, thank you. Alderman Versi, did you have a? Yes, I'd like to make that motion to leave the seat vacant until this coming April. Second. We have a motion and a second to leave the seat for the alder person of District 5 vacant until the spring, uh, the April general election. Under discussion? If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Okay, let's do a roll call vote on that. Sue? Yep. An aye vote would leave the seat open. A no vote, um, we'll put it back under more discussion. Sue? Okay, thank you. Um, Belt? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? I'm aye. sorry, Hammond? No. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Cuth? Aye. Kittleson? No. Matichak? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. And Versi? Aye. 12 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. I thank you, Sue. Okay, public forum. Sue. This evening we have three on our public forum. First one will be Delcy Johnson. If you could come forward, please. <coughs> it's a little squishy over there. <laughs> Delcy, can I have your home address, please? 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. <coughs> and you will have five minutes. <clears throat> Mayor Ryan, City Clerk Richards, City Attorney McLean, Aldermen and Citizens. 
In April of 2010, when the Council approved hiring four more firefighters, Mayor Ryan promised to present a long-range reorganization plan for the fire department by December 31, 2010. When the Council negotiated no layoffs in 2011 for the department, Mayor Ryan made that his excuse for not following through on his promise. In response to a request from Alderman Bourne, Chief Herman presented his long-range plan options to the Council in August. Chief Herman seemed to support four stations, which would involve closing the downtown station and station number five, and building a new station on 14th Street, complete with a community center and ice skating rink. However, when he discussed the options at the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee meeting on Thursday, his original plan had changed. Now his plan is to close the downtown station and the headquarters station and build a new headquarters and four bay station in the vicinity of 17th and Erie or 14th and Niagara. The Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee voted four to one to file Chief Herman's long range plan options, in effect kicking the can down the road again. There will be four retirees in the fire department this year and Chief Herman plans to replace them in April of 2012. It seemed to me that his main concern was how he would handle promotions if the council decides to close a station. When Mayor Ryan first spoke of a long-range plan, he expressed support for a half full-time paid and a half paid on-call department, which would be accomplished through attrition and would take 15 to 20 years. At Thursday's meeting, Chief Herman noted that he expects six retirements in 2012 and eight in 2013, suggesting that perhaps that would be the time to reorganize. But why wait another year when, 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 with four retirements, you could start the restructuring process now? This would most likely involve closing a station, and Chief Herman is determined that it will be the downtown station, which is the station that has the greatest number of calls. There are only three firefighters at the downtown station. They cannot take any action until another unit arrives because they need four men on site to act but there are only two men at station number five, so they also need to wait until another unit arrives before they can act. Given that the downtown station receives the most calls, it would make more sense to close the station with the fewest calls, resulting in fewer calls with a longer response time, than to close the station with the most calls, resulting in the most calls with a longer response time. In 2010, the department answered a total of 99 structure fire calls, which averages less than two calls per station per month. If the downtown station had 40 fire structure calls in a year, there would be 40 calls with a longer response time. And if station five had only five structure fire calls in a year, there would only be five calls with a longer response time. As for arguments about public safety issues and response times, it is interesting that half of Sheboygan's firefighters live outside the city where they depend on volunteer fire protection for their property and family with evidently no concern about response times and personal safety issues. Sheboygan has more fire stations per square mile than any other city of comparable size and population in the state of Wisconsin. Sheboygan's service area is 14.1 square miles, and its five stations far exceed the number of stations for cities of comparable size and population. By comparison, Janesville is 28.1 square miles and also has five stations. Beloit is 15.4 square miles and three stations. Wausau, 17.8 square miles, three stations. La Crosse, 22.2 square miles, four stations. The average response time in Sheboygan with five stations is three minutes, seven seconds. With four stations, the average response time would be three minutes, 54 se seconds. Chief Herman has cited the department's inspection and education programs as contributing to reducing the number of fire calls. The taxpayers cannot continue to fund the department for the worst possible scenario, and the public would continue to be well served with a reduction in the number of stations. I hope that the council will agree to move forward with the reorganization of the fire department starting in 2012. The council is aiming to keep the projected tax levy the same as this year, but you need to do better than that. Lower assessed values will mean that property taxes will still rise. Many of your constituents are losing their homes and are unemployed. The city's unemployment rate remains at 9.1%. 
The county unemployment rate is 6.9 percent. Excuse me, Elsie. Would you like your extra minute? Please. Will we have the additional minute? <coughs> Go ahead. And statewide, the unemployment rate is 7.8 percent. The city's allocation to the Mead Library will be $100,000 less than last year because of employee contributions to their retirement and health care. The budgets for all other departments should also reflect this change because of employee contributions, and undoubtedly there are other savings to be found in the proposed budget as well. When I served on the council from 1980 to 88, the Committee of the Whole met numerous times and reviewed the budget line by line. I always found many items that could be eliminated, and I'm sure you aldermen could do the same. There is still a deficit of $900,000 to be dealt with, and I hope the council will not decide to use reserve funds to make up this difference, but instead make further cuts to the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Dulcie. <clears throat> Next. Next on the list would be Milt Storm. Mel, can I have your home address, please? Yes, it's 1736 Marvin Court. That's in Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Again, I want to thank Mayor Ryan for this opportunity to address this council. I may not be very cordial in some of the things I would like to address. Previous councils have passed some good resolutions, and then other things, in my opinion, have been very dissatisfactory. The recall and removal of a present mayor has been one of the dumbest ideas I have witnessed and experienced in this city for the 50 years that I've been a taxpayer. After speaking at the previous council meeting, I again received an anonymous, threatening, and vulgar letter. Being an old Army veteran, I'm now moving into action. I would like to challenge the council to have former assistant U.S. Attorney Stephen Biscopic investigate me and Patrick Gillette in an open public forum, maybe something similar to a quasi-judicial. The citizens of Sheboygan need to know the truth about the recall process. Also in regard to Sheboygan press articles and editorial letters, the public needs factual rather than misguided and questionable information. With the upcoming retirement of Public Works Director Bill Bittner creates another physical problem of finding a qualified department head as Bill was. Even Jim, Ama Jim Amadio has been given more responsibility that he doesn't need, although he is very qualified in any task that he takes on with a, maybe a reduced salary. I'm sorry, that's a little sarcastic humor. You see, my boss paid me in peanuts and sometimes I didn't even get the shell. As a member of Neighbors Against Drugs, I sur surveyed many Sheboygan neighborhoods to eliminate drug activity. So it was my pleasure I selected Chad Pelichek one Saturday to survey the Erie Hill neighborhood. I educated him where all the drug houses were and were some residents we would receive some negative responses. To analyze recalls and improve the wellness of our neighborhoods, let me repeat a statement I made at a previous public forum many about a year ago. It is the wellness of our spirits and our souls that determines the wellness of our reasoning and our thinking. In addition, there is no person that is so bad that God cannot save. And by that same reasoning, there is no one so good that doesn't need a little saving grace. Do the right thing if you can, and let's move forward and do the th work that you are elected to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mel. Thank you, Mel. Next. Uh, Dimple Adams would be last. Well, can I have your home address, please? Uh, yes, it's Dimple Adams. I live at 1424 Virginia Avenue. And you will have five minutes. Thank you, and I am a taxpayer. 
and I've lived there uh, since uh, the mid-80s, and I've lived in the area since 1976. And uh, I can hear you better tonight. My eardrum is no longer bruised. Um, I thank all of you, including the mayor, city clerk, mm. Susan Richards, and attorney Steve McLean, and the council members for allowing me to speak tonight. I also thank you all for the service that you do for our city. And that also includes that row on the back, that group of people on the back row and some on the second row. Uh, I am very grateful to live in a city that offers services. And I feel that that's what we're all about. I have two quick commercials before I get to the point of my letter. One is, if you have not been to the North-South play that's going on right now, Les Miserables, the musical at North High School, you need to get there. They're going to be playing again on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights at 7. And it is a wonderful production. And the press needs to give it a little bit of attention also. Um, <laughs> there's also another group of students that got together this summer. And um, they call themselves the Music Union. And they performed little concerts around the city. And um, they earned money to donate to the North-South uh, music programs because of the cuts that have been done. And they're going to be um, entertaining us again at the Z spot on the 23rd of November. So if you're not doing anything that night, show up. They also have CDs to sell. OK, budget time is coming up. Cuts are coming. And um, again, your job is to offer services. And I did not like that I saw that privatizing might be part of our garbage pickup. But I will be very interested to see how that goes forward. But the main reason that I'm here tonight is to talk about what I talked with you a couple of weeks ago with the Committee of the Whole. And that is my vote. Now, my opinion of what has always gone on has been that we elect the executive person and that you guys are the legislatures. You're elected for two year terms. Eight of you are elected new every year. So I came to the committee of the whole meeting the other night to make sure that I had it straight in my mind. This new table of operation that we have in the city when we appointed the city administrator that you did last month. And you've taken away the powers of our mayor. He only has input. He has no say so or no authority, is my understanding. And it's my understanding that Mr. Um, Amato, um, I'm not sure if I said your name right, but I certainly um, um, do know who you are, uh, doesn't have a whole lot of authority either that he has to answer to three aldermen. And the president of the council is now the executive person for our city of government. That was the way I understood it when I left here the other night. If I have it wrong, I want you guys to explain it. Because I don't like that. And if I'm going to be coming to vote for someone that's not going to have executive powers, then I'm not going to go vote. You guys are only elected for two years. And I respect that. And each of you are elected eight one year and eight the next. So I am thinking that some of you have taken the mayor's issues on a personal level and uh, have put this council on steroids. And I'm not real happy about that. I don't even know what the mayor's duties are anymore. I don't understand. I don't know what he's supposed to do. He shows up for work every day. He has a problem that he has admitted to. There has been embarrassment to the city. I personally do not think that Mayor Ryan has embarrassed me. What has embarrassed me is how the press and how this council has gone after this problem. And some of you have made it personal. And you can say, no, I haven't. But you know you have. And now we have two attorneys involved. 
The other night you had a committee of the whole meeting and it was closed. We have no idea what's going on with the investigation because you're not allowing us to know. That's not right. I'm a taxpayer and I want to know what's going on in this city with those attorneys and I think it's time and six weeks, two months time, surely, to have been time to investigate this whole issue. Excuse me, Dimple, your five minutes are up. Would you like the additional? I would like one more minute because there's something else I would like to say. Okay, go ahead. Is that um, I, um, this is also November 11th is Veterans Day. And uh, I was a young wife in my 20s for six years during the Vietnam era. And my husband went to Vietnam for a year when I had a two-year-old. My brother was hurt in Vietnam, and he passed away last year. And he's going to have a full military honors burial in January at Arlington, which I'm extremely proud of. I am a lifetime member of the VFW. And so I want to honor all the veterans that are presently serving and that have served. And I especially want to honor our mayor, who is an ex-Marine. You're never an ex-Marine. You are a Marine for life. But he spent four years as a Marine. And I want to close with saying, simple fire to my mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dimple. Next. Okay, we're all set. That's it. OK. Um, mayor's announcements. I did not intend to make any announcements this evening, and I don't have any announcements, but I would like to make a couple comments. And forgive me if what I say, um, maybe I shouldn't, but I have to. I can't understand how this council, when we have somebody put in for the position of alder person to fill a whole five months of a term, or six months, whatever it is. The only person to come forward, how this council would instead decide to just not fill that position because that person may not have the exact same political views or agenda that they do. I find it disturbing, and I do, and I have to say that. Ms. Lassard has served on city committees. She has spoken before this council on numerous occasions in the six years that I've been around here on the council and as a mayor. But obviously, um, sh this council, some of us don't agree with everything that she, they stand for, whether that is being pro-fire department or putting a rotary out on Whedon Creek and South Business Drive, um, or simply being outspoken. I don't, you know, I, I didn't plan on saying this this evening, but I have to. I just don't think it's right. I think that this council has become far too political A representative one council member is one sixteenth of the vote. To keep that open, because some of us have decided that this person doesn't agree with everything that we'll want, I just don't think is proper, and I had to say that. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Consent Agenda 15-1 through 15-16, President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that all our O's be accepted and placed on file, all our C's be accepted and adopted, and all resolutions and ordinances be put upon our passage. Second. We have a motion and a second on the Consent Agenda. Under discussion. If there is no discussion, all in favor? Roll call, please. Excuse Melt. me. Melt. 
Aye. Warren. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Decker. Aye. Common. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Matichek. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Versi. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 1517 to be referred. Reports of officers 2, 1518 and 1519 lies over until November 21st. 1520 through 1540 to be referred. Resolutions introduce 3, 1541 by President Decker, promoting civil public discourse. President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I guess this came about. Uh, just be, I guess I'd like some explanation. Tell me about this. Uh, President Decker, would you like to explain uh, what promoting civil public discourse is? I can explain it. Um, it might be a little easier if I could refer to Attorney McLean. Um, maybe you have a little bit more history on that. Thank you. Uh, it's my understanding that at the last annual meeting of the League of Wisconsin Municipalities, the, all the communities that, uh, are in the League, uh, a resolution was adopted similar to this and uh, the resolution uh, requested that uh, all the municipalities throughout the state uh, encourage the promotion of civil public discourse and the, the League uh, disseminated this proposed resolution for all the cities and villages in the state to consider to adopt. So that's right. the basis for it. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Alderperson Kittleson. Any further discussion? <clears throat> if there is no further discussion, roll call, please. Warren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Belt? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 1542 by Alderpersons Raisler, Versi, Kittleson, Decker, and Sampson, lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire a community development specialist in the city development department. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd make a motion to move to suspend the rules, please. Second. Do we have a motion and a second to suspend the rules? Does any, would anybody like an explanation of, as to why the rules need to be suspended? The rules are suspended. Thank you. Uh, I'd move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1543 by Alder Persons, Raisley, Versi, Kittleson, Decker, and Sampson, lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire a plumbing slash environmental inspector in the city development department. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I again uh, request a motion to move to su suspend the rules. Second. Would anybody uh, like an explanation of why the rules need to be suspended? The rules are suspended. Please continue. Thank you. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion? If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Carlson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1544 through 1548 to be referred. 
Reports of Committee 7, 1549, by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operator's license number 9331 based upon her failure to accurately, accurately reveal all relevant convictions on her application and her record of violations related to the licensed activity. Alderperson Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Is Lee Miller here tonight? She's not here, Your Honor. Please continue. Um, we denied her license based on uh, two very recent underage drinking and disorderly conducts at a party. And uh, there was a negative recommendation from the police department. Very good. Any further discussion? There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. Herman? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kopp? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichuk? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1550 by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operator's license number 9339 based upon her, her failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on her application and her record of violations related to the licensed activity. Alderperson Vanderweel. Mr. Mayor, I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Is Megan Stadler here tonight? She is not here. Uh, the continue. committee voted three to zero to deny her license. We had a negative recommendation from the police department and many recent uh, violations. Very good. Any further discussion? If there is no further discussion, roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manichuk? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduce 10 1551 by older persons, Raisler, Versi, Kittleson, Decker, and Sampson, amending the municipal code so as to change the job description for the position of plumbing environmental inspector in the city development department. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I again move to suspend the rules, please. Second. Motion and a second to suspend the rules. I think we know why. Please continue. I, I, I move that the ordinance be placed upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to place the ordinance upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichuk? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Common? Aye. Hammond? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 1552 through 1554 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 1435, general ordinance number 321112 by Alder Persons Raisler, Kittleson, and Sampson, amending the municipal code so as to delete the current planning and development specialist and create the job description of community development specialist in the city development department. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't think that we need to suspend the rules for this, correct? Oh. No. Uh, I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the ordinance upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Boren. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I believe this uh, position is, uh, this job description is for an update for the person that's retiring in that uh, department, Carol Rudy. And uh, I believe Carol's going to be retiring soon. And I would like to thank, uh, personally thank Carol for her many years of dedicated service to the city of Sheboygan. And uh, again, thanks. And I agree, uh, Carol is our... Uh, Don't um, <laughs> Carol has been with the city longer than <laughs> other, any other current employee. How's that, Sue? That would be better. Okay, <laughs> and, uh, and, and Carol's great. I love calling the Department of Development and Carol says, City Development! And I say, hello, Carol, this is the mayor, and what may I do for you today? So we've been doing that for the last few years. So, well, I'll miss Carol. She's great. Thank you, Alderman Horn. Okay, I don't think that's what we're discussing here, though, right? Okay, for 1435, we have a motion and a second. To under and any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. 
Belt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hammond. Aye. And Heidemann. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries general ordinance number 331112 by Alder Persons Raisler Versi, Kittleson, Sampson, and Decker amending the municipal code so as to delete and add various positions to the TO in the finance department. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I again move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the ordinance upon its passage under discussion. If there is no discussion, we'll call please. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Koth? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1437 General Ordinance Number 341112 by Alder Persons Raisler, Versi, Kittleson, Sampson, and Decker amending the municipal code so as to delete and add various positions to the municipal court table of organization. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Again, I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the ordinance upon its passage under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. <coughs> 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1443 General Ordinance Number 351112 by Alder Persons Hammond, Boren, Matichek, and Van Akron amending the municipal code for as to provide a Petty cash fund for the city clerk's office. <laughs> Alderman Hammond. I'm going to count that petty cash fund. I move the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion in a second to put the slush fund upon its passage under discussion. No, 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 no. Petty cash fund. Under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. <laughs> Come on. Belt? Aye. Born? Aye. Jim. Uh, how much is this fund, by the way? Oh, it's about 100 a million. Bucks. 100 bucks. <laughs> 100, 100 bucks. 100 bucks. It's 100 bucks. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Donald? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Matichek? Aye. 15 ayes. Phew, motion carries. <laughs> Other matters authorized by law. Attorney McLean. 1555 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Gretchen Thomas, assistant superintendent of the Sporgan Area School District, submitting the approved tax levy for the 2011-2012 school year. We'll be going to finance. 1556 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2012 and June 30, 2013. To law and licensing. 1557 is an RO by the city clerk submitting communication from Joe Jantz, owner of Tidy Car of Sheboygan, requesting encroachments for areas around his business at 810 North 14th Street and 1418 Wisconsin Avenue. Uh, will be referred to city planning. 1558 is an ordinance granting Mr. and Mrs. Chance, their heirs and assigns the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of North 15th Street located at North 15th Street and Wisconsin Avenue in the city for the purpose of paving a parking lot. We'll also go to city planning. And 1559 is an ordinance granting Mr. and Mrs. Chance, their heirs and assigns the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of Wisconsin Avenue located at North 15th Street and Wisconsin Avenue in the city for the purpose of paving a parking lot. Will be referred to city planning. 1560 is an RO by the city clerk submitting as a matter of information a statement from the city clerk regarding the cost for a potential recall primary and or recall election in <coughs> for Mayor Ryan. These figures have not been included in my budget request for 2012. That lies over till the next council meeting. 1561 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Patricia Aholm suggesting that the vacant Aldermanic seat for district number five be held open until a general election can be held in April 2012. Motion to file. Second. Second. 
We have a motion in a couple seconds to file this document. Under discussion? All in favor of filing say aye. 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 Opposed? Documents filed. Motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everybody.